right, folks, welcome to another edition here of Crancis Corner Presents, the Ja'Cory Harris Show. As you can see in the video, Ja'Cory Harris joins me each and every week, talk a little Canes football, talk a little college football in general, and we review the week that was and preview the week that will be uh, here on Saturday for the Hurricanes. First off, Ja'Cory, welcome back to your own show. How you doing? Man, I'm doing fine, man. I'm just out here ready to talk about some Canes football, man. Uh, it was an exciting weekend. It was it an was. exciting weekend. It, it was. was. And so Cam Ward, by the way, Cam Ward, we're taping this on Tuesday. It's going to play later on in this week. But Cam Ward just started his talk with the media. And I just told you, Corey, I saw the quote. I love this because it's a great way to start it for us, too. There is no next week without this week. And he's 100% accurate. There is one yeah. game left in this magical parts of the season. We've talked about it all season long. Get through the beginning. Make sure you don't fumble in the middle. They did have a little one, but they came back from it. And now these last two games, we won the first one. Now we got this one against Syracuse. And then you're in the ACC championship. Love that quote. There is no week without, there is no next week without this week. I love that quote as well. And it's crazy because leading up to this, to this week, well, prior to this week, I didn't know that they was going to lose that Georgia Tech game. I didn't expect that. But Syracuse was the game that I had on the schedule after we got past uh, the Gators and all that stuff, you know, from the beginning of the season. Um, this was the game that I had on the schedule that Miami might slip up and lose this game going into the ACC championship. But unfortunately, we can't slip up now and lose this game. Right. So this is one of those situations that where now we have to go out there and play a good Syracuse team who's on a roll right now. Cal McCord, he's out here balling and he's lights out. And our defense – Showed us a little bit of something last week. They did things that I said that they need to do. We need right. turnovers and touch defensive touchdowns. They did that. So it's going to be exciting to see Syracuse, and um, I'm pretty sure they're going to come out here trying to throw the ball around, and um, you um, just got to stop it. All right. This is the Syracuse Super Bowl for the season because if they beat Miami, they knocked Miami right out of the ACC championship game. Like This is a big game for Syracuse. Huge game for Miami. Lots of implications. Glad you brought this up because my first note on my notes this week, Canes blow out Wake. But we were both close. I think you say, I think you nailed it, by the way, the halftime mm -hmm. score of 20 to 14. I think you said last week, I yeah, think it it's going to be close at halftime and then Miami's going to blow them out in the second half. I think you nailed the number on the dot. How about that? Hey. I don't even remember what I said at halftime, but <laughs> I do remember I said I, I was sitting It'd in the game. Close. I, was, I was sitting in the suite, and I was like, man, I told Zach that this is going to be a close game now. And then I did not think they was going to cover the spread. Right. But the last seven minutes of the game, they just magically started scoring touchdowns because they, they did what they were supposed to do. I right. said they need to go out here and establish the run, just just pound the ball down these guys' throats. They, these guys don't have the – the 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 backups to get off the to come on on and off the bench and on the field the same athletes they don't have all that stuff so just beat them up and just wear them down and then you'll see throughout the game how everything uh, affects that yeah, and absolutely that and we talked about offensively they've been playing pretty well the last couple of weeks defensively yeah. they need to step it up and you called it also defense had five sacks a pick six under two hundred total yards they gave up. Four for 14 on third down. Uh, that's what they gave up. They, they had the defense finally came through with the game they had to do. They had to have. And now they need another one this week to get the momentum going to the ACC championship. And then yeah. knock on wood somewhere past that in the playoffs you, as well. You know what's crazy what you just said? You just said a stat of they were four or 14 on third down. Do you know Wake Forest? It was at one point in the game. I think it was the second quarter where Wake Forest was three of four mm. on third down. Because I remember they made that stat up in uh, in the stands. They were talking about how Wake Forest was three or four on third down. They were just driving the ball. They was completely getting every third down pretty much. Right. So that means that that defense second half went one of ten. They went. It held them one of ten on third that's down. That's right. So that's, that's, that, that's the type of game plan. I guess Lance heard everything that everybody been saying. Uh you see the guys that at times they did look a little bit confused on certain motions and stuff like that, but they made plays. Right. The defensive line got sacks. The DBs held up. They they played a tough. They played a good game. They played a good game. 
Yeah, they sure did. And and then we've been waiting for it. We've been trying to call for it for weeks now yeah. here on this podcast, on the show. The defense needs to step it up. They need to have one of those games, catch momentum going into the ACC and into the playoffs. And this looks like the, maybe the start of it. We'll see what happens this week against Syracuse. Make sure they don't have a letdown here. Like you said, this cannot be the letdown game. At yeah. this point, I mean, Ja'Cory, the disappointment level would be through the roof if yeah. somehow they don't get to the ACC and now get to the playoffs at this point. I'll oh, start with the ACC, forget even the playoffs. If they somehow slip up this week, that the disappointment level, I mean, wow. I can't even imagine yeah. what it would feel like in Coral Gables. It would be horrible. And it, it would feel just like the year, I think it was with Malik Rozier then, when it was 10-0. and 0, 17. And then, lost, and then lost the last two games. That That's how bad it would feel. Right. Like, we, we can't have that type of, you know, uh, let down. I don't think that the fans deserve that. Everybody that's been supporting this team throughout this year, we've been really cheering our butts off. Right. And I don't think this team is a uh, – I don't think they're built like that, first of all. Um, they're going to go out there. They're going to perform, and I think they're going to step up in a big way. The crazy part is because, uh, you know, Rhett Lashley's waiting in, in the in the realm now. He's the other side of the ACC championship game waiting to see who he's going to play. Well, what, is, what a storyline it would be. If it's so, Mario versus Rhett in the ACC championship game. Yeah, that that's, that is going to be a storyline. So I got a question. So there's no way for Clemson to jump in there unless, well, Miami will have to lose, right? Miami would have to lose, and I think Clemson at that point can jump in at can't that jump point. In. And right. what about SMU? SMU SMU's they in. They're in. They're, oh, they're, they're already in. They're already – Rhett Lashley and Even SMU. Even if they lose. I believe that they're in no matter what. I believe they've clinched the spot. No matter okay. what, because even if they lose, they'll have two losses. Miami would have two losses if they lost. And I think the tiebreaker is where SMU would get in. So no matter what, SMU is on one side of that ACC championship game waiting to see if it's going to okay. be Miami or Clemson on the other side. Okay, so Cle and Clemson doesn't have an SEC game. I mean, an uh, ACC game this no, last week. So. I don't believe they do. So they're wa they're basically waiting to see what happens with Miami Mm -hmm. to see what happens and how somehow tiebreaker wise they could jump in there. But yeah, that's basically where it is right now. I'm looking at the conference standing in the ACC. Uh, SMU is at, because SMU is seven and O okay. in the ACC. So no matter what, they're going to have one loss. They're going to be in Clemson and Miami, both Clemson's at seven and one Miami's at six and one, but I believe Miami would win the tiebreaker against Clemson and get in. So basically they win, they're in, they lose, they're out and Clemson, takes its stake in the ACC championship game. So we talk about playoffs and getting to the playoffs and ACC championship game. Guess what? This week against Syracuse is the first playoff game for the Hurricanes because if they lose, they're out. That's yeah, it. They're so, done. So hey, at this point on, we can't lose. So there's right. no more games to be lost no. until until maybe next year. So, Correct. Correct. So right now we just have to win out and get to this national championship, get to the ACC championship, get this bye week, do everything the right way because – you know how the voters are. They're not going to allow us to lose this game and keep us in the playoffs. Right, right. no way. Because, because in that case, then you're going to have to keep three ACC teams in the playoffs. Right. And if, if, that, if that's the case, because I'm pretty sure whoever goes to the ACC championship, both of those teams are going to make the playoffs regardless. And they should. I mean, the way that SM, I mean, SMU right now is ranked number nine in the country. Uh, Miami's ranked eight. Clemson's 12. So mm -hmm. at that point, oh, I think the only way that possibly – Two teams don't make it is if the Hurricanes lose this week and and Clemson loses in the ACC championship game. That means probably just SMU will make it out of the ACC. But if Miami and SMU both make it, I think that both teams have a shot to make the playoffs somehow, some way, even with a loss, possibly depending on the voters. But I don't think anyone wants to wait on that. I don't think anyone wants yeah. to wait to see if I, Miami gets there think, and loses. Right. I do. I do think. No matter what, whoever makes it to the ACC championship is going to uh, be in. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, um, you got the big, the Big Ten, Big Twelve. Yeah, the Big Ten has to play. They, they, it's like four of them that right. that's up there. They, they have to knock each other off. Right. Um, I think Oregon and Ohio State is going to play each other again, right? In the champ. I think so. Yeah. Would they play each other again in the championship? Uh, I got to see if that's the case. Yeah, I would assume so because right now Oregon's 8 0 in the conference, Ohio State's 7 1, Indiana's 7 1, and Penn State's 7 1 in that conference also. Yeah, they that are, conference. They is are crazy. so hot. Wow. Oregon's 11 0 and 10 1, 10 1, 10 1, Ohio State, Penn State, Indiana in that order. Yeah. Wow. That top heavy conference. Yeah. So that means Oregon to play, Oregon to play Ohio State again. 
So the only team that 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 that'll suck because Ohio State will make it to the championship game, the Big Ten championship game. If they lose, they have two losses, but they made it to the championship game. And Penn State, Indiana only have one loss, and they'll still be ranked ahead of them. Right. Which is weird. The Big Ten <laughs> right now is what the SEC looked like about four or five years ago when you had like three or four of the top teams in the country in the SEC. Only three, t- only four teams made the playoffs. Remember, there was all those a couple of years uh-huh. where they thought three SEC teams would make the four-team playoff because they're so good. But right now, the Big Ten – is so top heavy. It is crazy how yep. good they are at the top. Everyone's with one loss. Everyone's just sitting there with one loss. So it's 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 except or they're undefeated at that point. Yep. So it, there's a lot going on there uh, at that point. A uh, couple more things I want to go over with you before we get out of here. First time, uh, first ten win season since seventeen. You just brought it up for Mario Cristobal. He's the seventh coach to do so for the for the Hurricanes. He did it twice with Oregon. And the Hurricanes have reached 10 wins for the 16th time in school history, all since 1983. Um, but with all that said, I go back to what I said to you before. If somehow, some way, they don't win this week and they don't get into mm-hmm. the ACC, doesn't matter what the stats this are. This whole season record, goes down the right, drain. Right. That's it. It all we, comes down to one game at this point and then a game after that and then hopefully a couple games after that. Yeah, because now we, we're going to look like Florida State. <laughs> right, right, right. It, it, it ain't it ain't matter it, and then it's, then they're gonna put us in the dog on uh chattahoochee bowl or right, something like right, that right. the the cheeses bowl and uh-huh. now we we go from playoffs to cheeses bowl don't right. and nobody's gonna show up it, it that's how it is that's how I it know. is you know we got high hopes and high expectations for this team so um I'm pretty sure they're gonna take care of business yeah i, I think so too i i really don't have a a uh I don't have a kind of inkling that they're going to lose this week. I think there's too much on the line uh, for this team this week. I think they're going to be super uber focused at this point. I think Cam Ward, as much as he doesn't have to play for this week, he's got a lot to play for this week because he came back for a reason. He wanted to win. He is one game away from the ACC championship game and one win in that away from the first ever 12-team playoff where they're going to have a bye. Miami ends up winning the ACC. They'll have a bye in the playoffs too. Forget about just making Uh it. It should be a lot of fun. Um, here's an interesting question since you just brought it up. We're talking about cheese at bowl or whatever. What was the coolest gift you got from a bowl game? I know they give out some pretty cool gifts. Did you get any cool uh, gifts on the bowl games? I think a TV. Like we, really? we had like a Best Buy shopping spree. Uh, so they give you a little um, uh, you know, a little stipend to get whatever you want. And I was able to get a TV. Uh they you order it, they send it to your house and everything like that. But the best thing was the, you know, you get get money. You get you get, you get a little change in your pocket. I think we got like twelve hundred dollars. Wow. So yeah, that that helped when especially back in the before the NILs, like right, right. twelve hundred dollars was a lot. Yeah, <laughs> was a lot. Right. I'll take twelve hundred dollars right now. I'll, be very I'll take it too. That. I'll take right. it too with all these grown right. people bills we got. <laughs> exactly. Take me that. back. Right. <laughs> oh man. Uh all right. So listen. We're gonna we'll we'll have a short show today because hopefully next week we'll be previewing the ACC championship game. And when we talk next week, I actually think it'll be right after the signing period, the first signing period here. Oh yeah. So we'll yeah, know yeah. a little bit about where the Miami recruiting class is also going forward mm-hmm. into next season. So it'll be a pretty big week next week. Hopefully we're talking about the ACC championship game and a top ten recruiting class at that point. Also, that'd be a lot of fun going into the kind of holiday spirit at this point. Yeah, I'll Sunday. be on a cruise next weekend, so I'll be watching the game from from the cruise line. So the ACC championship from the cruise line. When I was the last time I was on a cruise, I was on it during Thursday night football, I think during the NFL season a couple of years ago, and they had the game on while I was in the pool. Like okay. they had it on the big screen, and the the bartenders were walking out doing service while you're in the pool. So yeah, you oh, could man. actually yeah, you could sit like stand in the pool and have a drink and watch a game. Okay. Uh, I highly recommend it, especially if there's some good talent around you. That would be a nice way to <laughs> kind of sit around. So that's it. All right, Jacory, that's gonna do it for us. I am super pumped for the Syracuse game, and I don't know why. Probably because this is it. If you get there, finally, after all these weeks of me and you talking about what could happen, how to get to the ACC, the roadmaps in front of them, this is it. You beat Syracuse, you're in the ACC championship. And if not, we're going to be talking. It's going to be doom and gloom here on this podcast next week. Doom and gloom. And to be honest, I think this Syracuse game, I think it's going to look like the Florida game. Because I think they're going to know we got to come out and play. Right. They're going to come out and play hard. Offense is going to score a lot of points. 
and I think Syracuse is going to look good in the beginning. But I think what's going to happen is hopefully McCord could have a one of those pit games where he throw five interceptions and right. you know at least and five of them return for touchdowns. Well, that would be something. They get five yeah, that would be something. So right. let's hope let's hope he hope he have one of those games. I got a forty one seventeen Hurricanes beating Syracuse. What God, is your prediction? Isn't that, isn't that close to the Florida Gators? Yes, it's right there, right there. On yeah, it. yeah. Except I, I think gonna... I, I think I actually said the Gators are going to win that game. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, disappear. <laughs> no, you did. You did. Right, but I did. I did. It's all good. That was in the past. You yeah. Know, I don't judge anybody ago. by their past. Thank you. I pr- thank goodness. Otwise, you've you done be a good job right throughout the whole year. So right, we can go right. right here. <laughs> all right. Give me your prediction and then we'll call it quits for this week. My prediction I think they're going to cross the 50 uh, in points this week. And Ooh. it's going to be like a 50 to 24 type game. I like it. With the Canes okay. pouring it on at the end. Yep, same thing in the weight game, just like that, yep. right? Yep, yep. Let's just not have it a nail biter at halftime, twenty to fourteen. Let's make it. Yeah, I point. know, I please, know. Please, at that point. All right, Jacory, we'll speak to you next week. Hopefully, previewing the ACC championship game and your cruise and recruiting day all in the same uh, podcast. Uh, say yes, hello sir. to pops for me, and uh, that's it for us this week. We'll uh, say goodbye to the people. We'll see you next week. All right, man. Have a good one, man. Hey, can't wait to see everybody next week, and we're going to be – hopefully we're here talking about ACC going into the ACC championship. Oh, man, from your mouth to you know whose ears at that point. All right, that's yes, Ja'Cory Harris. I'm Zach Krantz. This has been Krantz's Corner presents the Ja'Cory Harris Show as we talk about Syracuse and hopefully preview the ACC championship game yes, next sir. week. We'll speak Happy to you holidays, guys. everybody. There it is. Happy holidays from all of us here on Krantz's Corner.